everybody. It's Tyler here at MSC checking team number 5460. Strike Zone coming in. Two district wins already as they come into here. And Strike Zone's been building fantastic robots year over year as well. Take a look at Strike Zone, what they have to offer here. A really nice drop down intake that I really like, but you got to take a look at their arm as well, too. Not just on the mechanical side, but we talk about some of the programming that's gone into it. A cool custom PCB as well that we're talking about, and also some nice electrical wiring. Let's learn more about 5460 and their charged up robot coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. If you're attending championships, come to the FUN and FRC Discord Meetup on Thursday, April 20th from 11 to 11.45 a.m. in Conference Room 360 CNF on the third floor. We'll have games, giveaways, time to socialize, and a chance to meet the FUN and FRC Discord staff. Get a reminder RSVP on the FUN or FRC Discords, and we'll see you at championships. Charlie, let's start off on your robot talking about the uh, intake here. I mentioned before, I really love uh, robots that bring nice wide intakes and strike zone. Uh, it's just been doing so well with uh, Kieran and Co acquisitions. So talk to me a bit more about how your intake's working, what's gone into it, and some of the results you've seen so far. So we first started off with at our first event, Kenner in week one. We started off being able to only intake uh, cones, and we decided to increase our cycles. We needed to also be able to intake uh, the cubes. So we decided after Kettering to add this uh, roller right here, and we are able to pick up cones, able to pick up cubes from underneath right here. So the cube can just go in, and then we are able to spit it into the low uh, nodes. And what's the significance, by the way, of uh, the couple of pieces that we see in here? Uh, our sister team, Chimera 1684, they we're playing a prank on their mentor and we found some of them around where our workshop is All and right. we decided to just throw them in the robot. Um, you, you mentioned that you did some modifications from your intake as well too. When you were like looking at the game initially, uh, did you always want to do cubes and cones from the ground or was that something you just determined was a necessity later on? We always wanted to do it. We knew that we wanted to score as many game pieces as possible, accomplish as many links, get as many points as we can and we determined that being able to do the cones and the cubes would give us the best advantage in that realm. And you're just able to bring in game pieces so quick, which is what I really like. Uh, it's that touch it, own it, you know, philosophy that Strike Zone uh, really br brings a lot on there. So I uh, appreciate you talking us more about that. I also noticed that you went full mechanical on this. There's no pneumatics on it as well, too. Can you talk to me about just some of the philosophy behind that and how it's been working out for Strike Zone? It's actually really good. We've used uh, pneumatics on pretty much every robot in our past, and we, just, we did test with pneumatics, but we decided that using a motor system would be better, just overall, yeah. more consistent. Let's keep moving on the robot. Talk about your uh, arm and claw area. And Cameron's going to be covering more about that from the mechanical side as well. Uh, you know, I had to ask you guys earlier, uh, some teams are just doing like carbon fiber wraps on your arm. This is a huge diameter carbon fiber pull. So I'd love to hear more about uh, this whole overview and what's gone into it on your robot. Yeah, so with our carbon fiber, we knew from the beginning that our entire upper structure needed to be as light as possible. Because in the past, we've had some CG issues with our robot. So we really want to prioritize a low CG. So this carbon fiber we ordered from a supplier in Wisconsin, and we all of these are just press inserts that we either epoxied or um, this arm we actually hot glued it in, and we found that it holds up really really well. So yeah, we we drive everything. <laughs> we drive everything from down below and a gearbox right down here. Um, Again, that was all for CG. We were able to keep this whole upper structure, excluding the Falcon, under seven pounds. That's really impressive. I mean, you're, and you're right, you know, CG is so important this year. Looking yeah. at it and watching your team on the field, you're just able to stay so balanced the, the entire way. And I know we'll be talking about maybe a little bit more about arm states a little later. Uh, I do want to focus on your claw a little bit yeah. as well, too. Talk to me about the gears that are on this a little bit. They're kind of fascinating. Yeah, so we decided to go with 3D printed gears up here, again, for the whole CG argument. Um, so we just did two 3D printed gears into nylon hex shaft with aluminum bolts capping it. So um, we found that the deeper the teeth were, the better that it would hold because we didn't want to have to worry about it ripping out or anything and um, yeah. One other thing I want to ask about is just watching this uh, belt here. There's almost like a, a little bit of a, I don't know if kink's the right word to it, but like uh, from a belt, I was like, do you have any slippage or anything like that or is there like an intentional design that you're doing? Um, the, it, the, Loose, the looser the belt is, it was a little bit intentional because we found when we had the belt tighter that these that these wheels would actually like start uh, pulling the game piece and like 
they would start slipping against it. And so we were leaving marks on cones and stuff like that. So now if we start pulling the game piece in too much, the belt will just slip before the wheels start to tear apart the, tear apart the cones or the cubes. Yeah, your transfer process is just so smooth as you go through on there. So I just love to see that. It's awesome. Uh, and congratulations on a great uh, mechanical design as well. But let's talk a little bit more about some of the electrical that you've been doing on your robot as well, too. And uh, Natalie, you're going to be covering, I see you got some custom work on a PCB here. So talk to me more about that and then uh, anything else electrical-wise on your robot. So this custom PCB came from um, one of my internships that I did at Cypress Integrated Solutions. We wanted to build something for FRC driver stations that was going to allow us to do a lot of things um, to add more analog and digital inputs like uh, joysticks and buttons on FRC driver stations. Just because we noticed the technology wasn't really out there, so we really wanted to add that in. So as you can see here, we have eight analog inputs up there, which can be used for your joysticks. And we have 32 digital inputs that can be used for every button that you would literally ever need. And then we also have um, four 12-volt outputs that are also used for um, LEDs. So you can do that by plugging in external power here. We also have 16 low-voltage inputs that are also used for um, like single LEDs and like smaller motors. And where's the PCB on your robot? So it's actually not in our robot. It's on our driver station. Oh, wow. So our driver station has a lot of like overrides on it that we use. So up here we use overrides for like our gyro um, and also for other sensors like our beam brakes and our intakes. So um, on our driver station, we have like a home button and our strike button, which controls a lot of our arm and our positioning. We also have our spit for um, our intakes as well as our claw. We also have our player station and our reverse player station buttons, which are so that way we can pick up from both sides of the player station without having to turn our robot a full 360. Yeah, I love the philosophy behind that, and cool to hear about the custom work as well, too. Congratulations yeah. on an awesome project there. Uh, how about anything else from an electrical on your robot you want to highlight? So with our electrical panel on our robot, we designed it um, to think about a lot of our weight. Since we knew a lot of our um, arm was going to be on the other side of the robot, we knew that's where all the weight was going to end up being. So we ended up putting our battery on this side of the robot laying down so it would save the most space, but also have a lot of the weight on, the, on this side of the robot to kind of counteract the arm. Um, we also have like um, our PCB and our Robo Rio on that side to kind of have like the shortest wire runs, so that way uh, we could really think about like even like wire um, like spacing and stuff and saving space for stuff like that. Yeah, great layout overall, and uh, it's always cool to see uh, more of the innards of the robot. Get some uh, detail of that as well too. So really appreciate that, Natalie. Let's start to wrap up on this robot. Lily's gonna be talking about some of the uh, programming and code that's gone into it. Uh, I love to just hear, uh, you know, some cool, you know, maybe highlights you want to cover as well too. Uh, and then, in, you know, I always like to look forward. Um, I know we're quite not quite at World Championship level yet too, but if you were to qualify for that, uh, what might you be looking at doing modifications at in the future too? So currently right now for the arm, we have a nested switch statement, which we found was the best way to travel between the cases for our arm. Because it is a very expensive carbon fiber tube, we don't want to risk it cracking or breaking or having to epoxy it back together. So something that we created was a nested switch statement, as I said before. So we travel between all of the stages of our arm to make sure that we don't accidentally clip the arm in some way, which we really needed when scoring for the nose. We wanted to make sure that we were never at a low level trying to score high because we would end up damaging the arm. And then the nested switch statement on top of that is to switch between the initial statements to make sure that you're going through all of the progresses the right way. And as for the World Championship, I would say already we've made some modifications for auto-targeting. We used to have two limelight sensors up here to do April tags, and we discovered later on that the limelight for the nodes was a lot easier for us because we were able to score a lot easier like that, and it was easier to target as well. So maybe something for worlds would probably just be fine tuning and making sure that we have a more complete, maybe a more autonomous auto targeting function because we do have some driver help right now, but maybe for worlds we have that limited down as possible. That way we can be as efficient, excuse me, as efficient as possible. Well, 5460 Strike Zone, thank you so much for taking the time to tell us more about your team, your robot, another great robot uh, for another year. Of course, we wish you best of luck here at MSC and uh, throughout the rest of the season, wherever that takes you. Congratulations and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first team experience and offers high quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. 
Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and first updates now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.